Hey, what's up, internets? It's uh, Tobin. This is Fuzzy Tolerance Screencast number 16. Another look at Tile Mill. I finally cleared up enough uh, emergencies off my desk to get back to the Mecklenburg base tiles. And we got our 2012 LiDAR data in. Which LiDAR data? Oh, uh, I'll talk more about that later. Um, and they look really good. I've put them out there in production. They're now the default tile set you go when you go see Mecklenburg's GeoPortal. And they they look really good. I mean, if, if you've seen me, you know, do, like, dress, you know I'm not very good at coordinating colors or anything, really. But I think they look really good. They look better than what we had. They look better than anything we have, really, at this point. And I'm really happy with them. So I wanted to show them to you talk a little bit about the styling I did and how I did it and some kind of tips and tricks I found while I was building them along the way. All right, let's take a look here. What I'm going to do, rather than doing this live in tile mill because that'll draw slower, I'm just going to show it to you right here in GeoPortal and we'll take a look. I used to default GeoPortal to the Google Maps map. And now I default it to this because I, quite frankly, I just like it better. And we're just going to look at the code here in Sublime Text 2 and just kind of go through it. There are 15 layers involved. There's buildings, parks, there's uh, local roads, there's this surrounding kind of road stuff here. There's a uh, streams, there's these jurisdictions, there's these political boundaries, state line and county lines. There's light rail, railroads, greenways, ponds, these surrounding water bodies, the internal water bodies, ponds, uh, hill shade and relief map, parcels, a bunch of layers. And to do the labeling and stuff and the way I want to do it, a number of layers are loaded several times. You'll see that as we go through some of the styling. All right, it starts out like this. It's basically uh, Mecklenburg is focused, not only being the center of the map, it's focused because it has that, uh, those, that imagery behind it. So it immediately draws your eye to it. And the rest is fairly empty. It's there for locational reference, but you don't see anything out here because... I mean, who cares? Sorry, Gaston. So, we'll start zooming in. You'll see at this level we have the uh, whole, you know, this whole Catawba River ocean here. And we have the interstates, you can see. And if you go to maps.co.mecklenburg.nc.us slash geoportal, some of the color gradations on here are, are fairly subtle. And I don't know if they're going to pick up on you know, a screen recording and then upload it to YouTube and convert it, all that stuff. But there's a very subtle shading to the jurisdictions here in Mecklenburg. Not enough to throw you off the, uh, the, the color relief, but enough to tell you that it's there, other than just seeing a dotted boundary. So we'll zoom in a little bit. You can start seeing a little more detail in the imagery. Get in a little bit more and you'll see you'll have the uh, primary roads. Uh, there's four classes of road I made. Uh, the highways, primary roads, secondary roads, and ramps. So not very many categories. And over in our road CSS, it's pretty much like I had it the last time I did one of these podcasts, screencasts, whatever where it's just at different zoom levels, it's setting the height and width. And this zoom level, it's, it's simply one color line. Go down a little more, you'll notice the interstates go to having an, an outer boundary to them. And that's done by essentially loading the roads twice and drawing them twice. Once uh, at one width and the next time at two pixels or more bigger. And that'll go on the bottom, so you'll see the inner fill, the outer fill sticking out a little bit and the inner fill on top of it. 
you'll see you'll have at this point you'll have the secondary roads you'll get parks green you get this dash green line is a uh, greenway and you'll get some labeling for the the major the primary roads and you'll get this little pink dash line is is railroads because I couldn't think of anything better and railroads usually stick out sticks out like a sore thumb on a map there's these big black dash 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 lines and with or in case dash lines and you know I'm not sure that many people care about railroads I mean it's not like you know, we have a light rail in Mecklenburg that goes like 50 feet so eh, just try to de-emphasize that going a little further you see a little more detail same types of layers go in another step it'll turn off the color relief at this point we when we get here it's uh start when we turn on these extra features for one thing it it starts to all the colors start to bleed together because there's so many colors in the relief and it's uh frankly starts to pixelate out around this zoom level anyway so we turn that off you see now we've got a number of different things. We've got park labels and we've got a two, we went from one dimensional secondary roads to two dimensional secondary roads. But there is anything else I want to say about that. Now it is a one dimensional building at this point, just a building footprint. We go in a little more and you get these 2.5D buildings. And that's what we talked about before in the last one where you have to hack tile mill a little bit, go into that reference.json file, go to the building height and change it from a, a uh, number type to a string type so you can put it in a field. So then, oh, 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 those are roads. Building to building, to build, uh, buildings 3D. That's 2.5D. If you're one of those types, um, basically we're saying these boxes are just uh, uh, the linter saying that's not real CSS. Which, yeah, you can ignore this. Height greater than 10. Let's talk about lidar for a minute. Lidar. See, everybody talks about LiDAR. There's like LiDAR blogs. Oh, it's the coolest thing. I scan the inside of my, you know, bathtub and all that LiDAR stuff. LiDAR is a pain in the ass. It's like our new LiDAR, the, the point density is like averages to like 1.5 feet. There's a, uh, it's 88 gigs of LAS files. Processing it is just like anything you want to do is like, all right, I'll see you in 12 hours. Oh, oh, it's awful. So I converted that point, and then I got the got heights on the buildings from the average from the points. Then I was like, awesome. Wait a minute, that's above sea level. That's not above ground level. So then I gotta go back and get the ground level, do that, math it, and then ah, oh, see, all right, what happens in a resident? I, I was going. This looks great. And I went to a residential areas, and there's some houses sticking like a hundred feet up in the air. So I go and look. And you know it's it's lidar first pass, and lo and behold, there's some big old trees overhanging a lot of those tiny little roofs, and then oh oh yeah, it was just hard. It was this whole last week has been has been crunching lidar and 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 uh, oh post Postgres guys, awesome Postgres. But one thing that'd be really nice if there was some way to kind of peek and see how far along something has come because it's kind of like like fishing with a bobber and a worm and you throw it out there and you're looking at this bobber not moving and you're like I wonder if that worm fell off but you really can't tell you don't know what it's doing so you're like it's been running for 10 hours is it ever going to finish or am I going to stop it right now it would have finished in like 10 seconds but you don't know but LiDAR ooh LiDAR anyway so we got 2.5D building heights and what I'm doing is 
Basically, to fix that problem with the LiDAR, I said, any footprint less than 3,000 square feet, just throw it out. Just set it to height zero. And then anything of, of height zero, I just bump it up to height 10. So it's extruded a little bit of fake, fake way, and buildings with bigger footprints are extruded uh, probably the right way. We have found some errors in here, but hey, what do you want from me? So there, there's... 2.5D buildings with the roads, what I did is that at uh, this zoom level, the shading in between the roads is uh, the 2.5D road is what breaks up the shading of the jurisdictions. When you zoom in to when the parcels turn on, what I've done is I've taken away the jurisdictional shading and I just shade in the parcels. So the, the secondary roads are not shaded at all now. They're actually shaded a little tiny stripe of white with no outer boundary. So stuff like, uh, like this Mayfield Terrace where it's uh, a road but it does not split the parcel. You can still see it. So basically what you're seeing is the edge of the parcels and not a road that is... Uh, slap down there with the boundary. It's a very, it, it's a much nicer look. Uh, I ran into, well, that's very nice for secondary roads, but for like an interstate, there's just going to be this huge gap here, and it's going to look weird just to have a little 277 symbol floating in the middle of a, a unfilled ocean. So for primary and highway and a ramp, I took away the outer boundary shading and just put in a that subtle fill just so you can tell it's there and see what it is. I'm not sure that's the ideal solution, but I like it. I think it looks pretty good. And as you go zoom in further, not a whole lot changes. One nice thing about the way the buildings are done is it's put up by essentially elevated by map units. So as you zo you set this building height once, as you zoom in, it naturally appears like you're zooming in because it'll appear to be higher. That gives you that real zooming in type effect. So that's basically the tiles. Uh, really happy with how they turned out. Can't say enough good things about tile mill. Tile mill is just awesome. Now let me give you some just general notes about how all this worked. I didn't go through a whole lot of this uh, this styling because a lot of it isn't terribly interesting. It's basically what we talked about before. Uh, use these types of variable declarations at the top. It'll just make your code so much easier. See, these are all the colors I'm using, and I'll go down at some point, like for the the uh, Cardo NC and South. North Carolina, South Carolina, um, basically what I've done is the map background has a, a land fill or a color for the land. It's a very subtle, subtle fill. And then for South Carolina, I just said darken a little bit. Nothing against you, South Carolina. Um, it's just uh, to give you a visual reference of where that state line is and that those are two different states. So you can do a lighten and darken and spin with lighten and darken to keep it along the same, you know, color wheel sort of path. So very handy. Stick those at the top. Uh, let's see, doing jurisdictions. You'll see I'm loading these things more than once at times. A lot of times it's to do labeling and make sure those are going on top of other features. The way uh, uh, it d handles labeling is the labeling comes in at the same level as the feature that's being labeled. So it's not like it jump labels jump on top of everything in the map. So if if you had parks filled parks labeled and then drew parcels on top, you would never see that parks label because it's going to go underneath it. So for a lot of times for labels, you'll want to load that layer twice and just move the labels higher up in your chain. Essentially I moved uh, 
Yeah, see how fast this is? It's awesome. I moved things like uh, buildings on top of everything. Let me see if I can find a good example here. Might not be able to. Buildings on top of everything was slightly transparent. So you'll be able to see through a little bit. I don't know if you can tell from here. Let me look down down here. Yeah, you can see a little, see South Church Street. I don't know if you can see it on the screencast, but you can see the roads beneath them. But park labels I put on top of everything. That way it wouldn't be squished by, it was having a weird kind of look. And I can't really find one to show you here. Yeah, like right here, it was going underneath this building, and that was a weird, kind of a weird look, so I put those on top. So you have to load layers multiple times to get that labeling positioning the way you want it. Let me see if there's anything else interesting in here. Ponds, fill with water. See here, we got parks, darkened forest. Basically what I did is darkened... When parks are at this level, I darken the color because I'm making them opaque. So when you're looking at a park, you can kind of see the uh, the relief underneath it. And then when it's zoom level greater than 15, when that raster turns off, I turn the parks back down to their regular color with an opacity of 1. That's where that kind of dark and light color stuff is, comes in really handy. Yeah, buildings, everything else here is pretty dull. Uh, here's how you do a like dashed line. Line dash ray, I'm just doing 4-4. Four, four. So, 4 pixels of line, 4 pixels without. The roads are the most complicated thing you generally render. Um, there's the colors and fonts, and it's going through at the top. It, this is mostly from that, the... Uh, DC demo that comes with tile mill. And then with road widths, you set them at different zoom levels. Here's uh, the one for the one way arrows, and it's just a marker type arrow. And these are just queries based on uh, you know, our, our data. Road labels, here's uh, basically, I label the highways normally with text if they don't have this cardo shield value which is just a field tacked on for the interstates otherwise i do it with this cardo shield and it's using an interstate symbol uh, a png file and just putting that text on top so that's kind of interesting and yeah, that's just the surrounding house that's, you can see it's not a ton of CSS to make some pretty good results. And the raster stuff is basically loaded and the, the colory stuff is no opacity and the, the hill shade stuff is uh, very opaque. So you can see the colors beneath the, uh, the slope. Is that kind of bumpy look to it. So those are the tiles. Let me talk a little bit about how I made them because that was kind of cool too. Made them with tile mill, of course. Um, it ended up being a 1.75 gigabyte MB tiles file, which is not bad at all. And the cool thing, people were very interested in this in one of my earlier posts. Uh, it did the whole thing in a little bit quicker than last time. Uh, one of the big penalties for this, I think, on the maps I made are those rasters. I think those slow it down a good bit. You can get it quite a bit faster without rasters. But it's still, it's well under an hour. It ended up being like 52 minutes and some change. Uh, notice I did this twice. I made the tiles twice. One at a low, low mech base low and mech base. What I did is I wanted this surrounding area just for reference, but only for uh, a couple very low zoom levels, like zoom levels 9 through 11. I wanted this surrounding area. I don't want to build tiles for this whole area all the way down to 18 because beyond just for reference of that very high zoom, I don't care what's going on over here. 
Sorry, Gaston. So uh, I build these low tiles you just through levels 9 through 11 for that wider area. And then levels 12 through 18, I build just for the extent of the county. And that builds two different uh, MB tiles, two different SQLite databases. And MB tiles is just a SQLite database in a particular schema. Now, tile mill will not like append or replace tiles in an existing MB tiles database. So you make two MB tiles database, and then the command you run is like a oh, what it's like a you'll need SQLite three. Uh, it you'll have it on probably Linux and Mac. If you don't, you won't have it on Windows. I'd get SQLite Man, which is a cool little uh, manager for for SQLite. It'll come with the SQLite three command that you can reference. It's like SQLite three. It's like the name of your thing. Mac base load on MB tiles and dot dump. And that's telling it to just dump out that database and pipe into SQLite three. Our big and this is our big MB tiles, our big SQLite database with 12 through 18. That's going to take our our three zoom level wide, three zoom level wide view tiles and dump them into our tiles that were level 12 through 18 just for Mecklenburg. Now, when this runs, you will get a bunch of bunch of screaming and shouting. It'll say error this, error that. All these things exist. It's really just telling you that it's trying to make the dump is like create table and then load all this stuff. What it's telling you is these tables already exist, but everything runs fine. You'll have one ME tiles database with all your tiles in it. Splitting that up will, will save you a bunch of time. And you could really do this, you know, any way you want. You could split it up into four or five different ones if you needed to for some reason. So that's a little handy, handy tip. Um, let's see, serving tiles. Let me show you. There are a bunch of ways to serve these out because this is just a SQLite database. I think I, I shared you the script I, I used last time. But basically, most of the scripts you find will have a lot of stuff for like uh, grids and, and, and whatnot. Just to serve tiles, you're basically just looking at something like this, where it uh, basically runs a query on the XYZ passed by the client. So you can serve it with PHP, and you can find scripts to serve it in PHP and .NET, any language you want. You can scripts to serve it in Node. It's one of those things where it'll just depend on how you want to scale. Like for our scale at Mecklenburg, they are super fast in SQLite, so we don't care. Um, and that's SQLite PHP in Apache uh, with mod FCGID, so in CGI mode. Fast CGI mode, pardon me. So it goes plenty fast, but it's one of those things where a request from one user makes like 10 requests to the server for a bunch of different tiles, depending on how big the map is they're looking at. So you might want to go with something that, depending on how you need to scale, that is more uh, concurrent, more you know, nodey, where it can handle a bunch of simultaneous requests better than Apache can. But for, I mean, if I'm talking to any other like county people, yeah. Regular Apache PHP is fine. So, thank you. It's extremely quick. Um, as you can see, it just, it just. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting at home going into the county remotely as you're looking at this. So it's very, very quick. Just with SQLite. Other thing you can do, I should mention, is there's uh, some scripts to basically explode the SQLite database. So take all your tiles in there and the sh shove them into your standard uh, you know, Z, Z, X, Y folder structure that you usually put tiles in. And then you're not having any server side anything. That's the other nice thing about SQLite is you don't have any server side anything really for GIS. This is just plain old, these buildings are probably too high. I don't know. It's a bird flew over something when this happened. 
Oh, there might be something going on out here. Yeah. LiDAR. Don't get me started about LiDAR. Anyway, that's basically what... Oh, let me tell you one more thing. We're setting these images to cache as they come out of the server for like 30 days, for a month. So, and I was planning on rebuilding these tiles once a month. You know, it takes less than an hour. I can rebuild every night, but once a month should be fine. But if you're concerned about that, like you don't want, if you're replacing these on day 30 of the month, you don't want somebody to come in on day 29 and then essentially they'll have two month old data. What you can do, what you can do is when you make the request for that base map, is just tack a fake argument on it. Like this to this MB tiles server PHP file, this v.5 doesn't do anything. All it does is it changes the URL to that to that PHP file. But by doing that, it invalidates your cache because your cache doesn't have anything with a v5 on this. So if on the 30th when I roll this out for the next month, I can change this to v6 and now people are looking at a brand new tiles even though we set the the tiles by default to cache for 30 days as images so that's how you do something like that so that's our tiles they are out there you can see them in GeoPortal they are very pretty I think so have fun with them if you have any feedback again I I am not good with things like colors and uh, anything that could be related to being hip. So if you have any feedback, shoot it my way, and uh, I'd be really happy to hear it. Anyway, that is tile mill. That's probably the last tile mill I'm going to do since everything's working now. And uh, I can't recommend tile mill enough. It is really easy to use. It is extremely fine-grained in the way you can tune how your tiles look, and it is the screaming fastest tile generator I've ever seen and putting it in MB tiles normally you know when you put rasters in a database God kills a kitten normally that's my thing but putting those tiles in, in a SQLite database is fantastic makes it very easy to work with so thanks for watching I'll see you next month bye bye